What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 horribly bad WWE wrestling attires we all forgot about. Part of a wrestler's total package is their attire. Their entrance music, everything plays a part in it. But you gotta have some good attire. If your attire is trash, people tend not to care. That's just, just, just what it is. If your tire just doesn't make sense, it looks trash, it looks hokey, how can you expect someone to care about you winning a match? You know? So we're gonna check out some of these horrible attires. Maybe there are some that I remember. Maybe there are some that you guys remember. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get right into this uh, this video. Should be a good one. Attire is one of the most important elements of their presentation and character. The attire should represent the wrestler and should be memorable for all the right reasons. Mm -hmm. However, not every wrestler has had an attire that is flattering and sometimes <laughs> a wrestler begins to wear an attire that is so poor that it can sometimes lead to fans questioning what on earth that wrestler was thinking. Yeah. The majority of the attires in this list were worn only once, as the wrestler realized just how <laughs> unbelievably bad their attire was on, on take WWE him in. television. The hell is that? Right, it's now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the worst <laughs> WWE attires that we all forgot about. What was that? What was that, Undertaker? What the hell was them snakeskin pants? Come on, bro. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also, check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Baron Corbin. Oh, now, in 2022, WWE yeah. made the bold decision to pair Baron Corbin with former WWE champion JBL. This was a captivating choice for WWE to make as Corbin was in a state of limbo and JBL hadn't been an on-air character in a considerable amount of time. The October 17, 2022 edition of Raw saw Corbin and JBL come down to the ring ahead of Corbin's match with Dolph Ziggler, but fans weren't talking about Corbin and JBL's partnership. All they could focus on was the horrendous attire that Corbin was wearing. Corbin was wearing long pants and a vest, but the color scheme was black and cream, and it looked absolutely hideous. Awful. This lit social media on fire with fans questioning the attire. <laughs> I thought JBL's suit being four times too big was bad. The bad Corbin came out in ring gear that looked like he's wearing an, only an apron flesh colored tight. I ain't gonna lie to you. JBL still dressing like it's 2005 with the oversized suits. That's wild in itself. But man, Corbin, come on, bro and wondering if Corbin had been forced to wear it. <laughs> Thankfully, Corbin has since retired the less than stellar attire and hopefully it's been disposed of and never to be seen again. Oh my God. Let's also not forget about JBL's suit <laughs> pants fail. They were memed within seconds. <laughs> Number nine, scripts. When news broke that WWE were gonna repackage main roster star Reggie, fans were excited. Reggie managed to get himself over on the main roster and NXT was a perfect platform for him to take his character even further. In a daring move, WWE decided to completely repackage him. Reggie would now become a character known as Scripps. Scripps was a rebellious figure who was threatening to bring down NXT. Unfortunately, Scripps would wear an attire that completely killed a mystique of what was supposed to be an interesting character. He'd wear a black and orange outfit with a mask that looked like it was about to fall off his head. Now, the main issue with the outfit wasn't just that it was unflattering to look at, it was evidently poorly made. Reggie had a big chance of getting over with the character, but there was simply no way fans were going to accept the character if he was wearing that attire. <laughs> Scripps only wrestled a total of two matches on NXT TV since his debut, so that goes to show how NXT officials have already lost faith in the character. Oh, Number awful. 8, Christian. The December 6, 2004 oh. edition of Raw was run by guest general manager Chris Jericho. During Jericho's reign of power, he would force his arch-rival Christian to wrestle Shelton Benjamin with just one catch. Christian would be forced to dress as Captain Charisma. <laughs> this was in essence a superhero outfit and it looked dreadful on TV. In his defense, he was able to make the attire work and he and WWE themselves never once pretended like the attire was anything special. The finish of the match saw Christian hilariously get blinded by his own mask, Captain. allowing Benjamin to hit the T-bone suplex Captain for victory. <laughs> Number seven, The Big Show. Now, the Big Show's pairing with Chris Jericho received widespread praise from fans. The two had natural chemistry together, and what was crazy about the pairing was that it was never even planned. Mm. Jericho was set to team with Edge before an injury put Edge on the injured list, and then Jericho pushed for Kane to become his new tag partner. 
but it was Vince McMahon who ultimately decided to pair Jericho with The Big Show, which was the right move, and Jericho has gone on to call The Big Show his greatest tag team partner. During this time, The Big Show would wear some questionable outfits, yeah. including one specific attire at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view in 2009. Big Show would wear a purple and black singlet for Jericho's match with Batista and Rey Mysterio, and the mismatch of the colours just didn't work. Mm -hmm. It was incredibly distracting and made the former world champion look incredibly ridiculous in the ring. <laughs> Number 6. Kane oh, A Kane boy. evolving into a corporate Kane was one of the more controversial decisions yeah. WWE have made over the past decade. Wasn't a big fan of it, but yeah. Kane's sinister, demonic character would be pushed aside in favour of corporate Kane. He was now an authority figure in WWE working for Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. This character change received huge backlash from fans as Kane was just now an ordinary guy and WWE <laughs> completely abandoned the exciting elements ordinary of his character. <laughs> one of the worst elements of his new character was his attire, as it was truly one of the worst attire choices in WWE history. He's wrestling in Kane a suit. would wear suit pants and sometimes even wear business slacks on his feet. There was no way that the former WWE champion was comfortable wrestling in such a restrictive outfit. But in early 2014, Kane's attire would get even worse as he would begin to wear a white vest with his attire in two specific matches against Daniel Bryan. This was not remotely flattering and thankfully Kane quickly removed this from his attire as the feedback was less than positive. Yeah. Number 5. Kurt Hawkins uh, the build to Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder vs The Revival match at WrestleMania 35 was virtually non-existent. Mm. The two teams would collide on a pre-show for the Raw Tag Titles and this was a match which infamously saw Hawkins finally win a match in WWE after losing 269 consecutive matches. Cold, Whilst this should have been a great moment, there was something overshadowing the entire thing That's and that was cold. Hawkins' attire. Hawkins debuted a special attire for WrestleMania 35. It was a green singlet that made Hawkins look like a member of the Spirit Squad. Facts. Hawkins' partner Ryder was wearing white and gold trunks with black boots, which meant that Hawkins' attire choice just looked completely ridiculous and in complete contrast to his. And before uh. carrying cross, a carrying cross's initial run on the main roster oh, can nah, be summed up in one word: oh, disastrous. WWE, well, specifically Vince, Vince McMahon, would strip away everything that made Cross special in NXT in favor of his own personal vision. This was awful. Bro. Cross would debut new attire, which would feature a bizarre helmet during his entrance, and then suspenders for his in-ring attire. Fans loathed this attire choice as Cross looked like a novelty act, and there was no way fans were going to take him seriously. That was awful. Cross bro. himself strongly detested the attire, and he would that, discuss his drawing an appearance on the two-man power trip podcast awful. as he revealed. Well, what I was told was. This was going to be an upgraded version of what I was previously sure. doing in NXT. Okay. Upgraded. A bigger and better version of what I did. And they said that um, they wanted to give me new music. And they wanted to switch up my entrance a little bit. They wanted to sabotage and then you, bro. We got this mock-up of this outfit. And it looked cheap and horrendous. And I said, surely this is just a concept. This is not what they're actually going to try to manufacture or engineer. That was awful. Because this is a billion dollar company and this looks like trash. Nah, no, right. Sure enough, the day comes, we get the costume. And I was like, boy, I don't know about this. When Cross was eventually brought back to WWE in 2022, his original NXT attire would return and the helmet and suspenders Jesus. were never to be seen again. Oh. Number 3. Keith Lee Upon Keith Ugh. Lee's call up to the main roster in 2020, Vince McMahon wanted to alter his presentation and attire. Lee would be forced to wear a shirt and there was simply no need for Lee to wear anything on the top half of his body. The shirt wasn't exactly well fitted and it was produced mm -hmm. without care and attention. Lee would later confirm that the shirt wasn't his idea, which didn't exactly come as a huge surprise. Yeah. This wouldn't be the only unfavorable attire Lee would wear on the main roster run, as when he would become Keith Bearcat Lee, yeah. he would wear a black singlet with claw marks. This was also received with less than stellar reviews from fans, making it clear that WWE's main roster vision for Lee's attire simply wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. Number 2. John Cena just over a decade before the 2013 SummerSlam event would be main evented by John Cena taking on Daniel Bryan, the two would collide on WWE Velocity in 2003. Mm. This was a time when Cena was having a mini push into the main event scene whilst Bryan was an unsigned WWE prospect. Mm -hmm. The match, whilst having historical importance, is also known for featuring one of the worst attire choices of the past wow. two decades. 
for the aforementioned match, Cena would wear yellow jeans and Hell. yellow wrestling boots. <laughs> Cena looked comical, and somehow fans were supposed to take the attire seriously. And number one, Rey Mysterio. A wrestling legend Rey Mysterio wore some iconic attires over his decorated career, mm -hmm. but his attire at 2007 SummerSlam pay-per-view left fans bewildered. Mysterio would wrestle Chavo Guerrero in his attempt to pay tribute to the Silver Surfer. Oh, no. Mysterio wore a silver mask and silver pants, but the former WWE champion also painted his body silver. On paper, this was a creative idea from Mysterio, but the execution simply yeah, didn't work. It didn't work. Unfortunately for WWE and Mysterio, this marked Mysterio's grand return to WWE after 10 months on the shelf, and a lackluster attire overshadowed what should have been a celebratory moment. Yeah. They you could have just stayed with the silver silver mask and pants, man. <laughs> Some of these were god-awful. Some of these is just, oh, my God. What were they thinking? Ah, uh, just get it off my screen. Comment down below. Let me know what's the worst wrestling attire you've ever seen. It doesn't even have to be in WWE. It can be in any company. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I am still the Undisputed YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World and your Intercoast World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.